welcome to my YouTube channel and here I am with part 4 of class 11 biology chapter 1 the living world. So as promised we are going to begin with the taxonomical aids. Now before starting with this we what we need to know is what is the meaning of this word aid. The meaning of this word aid is to help. So taxonomical help a sort of help that is helping us in identifying the plant spe species and the animal species or the plant specimens and the animal specimens. So let us quickly read it out. Collection of actual plant and animal specimens useful in agriculture, forestry, industry and in knowing our bioresources and diversity. So in taxonomical aid, what exactly we are doing is we are collecting the actual specimens of the plants and animals. So here we are not making any wax model of these plants or animals. We are having the actual plant specimens, the actual animal specimens. And how are these useful? These would be useful in our agriculture and forestry. How in agriculture and forestry? Because it would help the farmer or other people to identify the plant specimens and the animal specimens. So in agriculture, in forestry, and it is also useful for the uh, knowing of bioresources and the diversity that is present in our world, like the different types of animals, the different types of insects, the different, different organisms that are present, the whole diversity. So this is what taxonomical aid is for. Now here I have classified the techniques to store and preserve into six categories. Little bit easy I have made so that you can easily understand that. So there are six techniques by which we can store and also preserve the plant and animal specimens. You have herbarium, you have botanical gardens, the museums, the zoological parks, key and certain others which we would be coming to. So if we begin first of all with herbarium. What exactly is a herbarium? So storehouse of collected plant specimens that are dried, preserved and pressed on sheets. Okay, now I will help you to understand this particular thing. We all know uh, shrubs, herbs, all that category. That category is for the plants. So therefore herbarium is also a storehouse of plants. So this is how you can link and remember this thing that uh, you know, herb is a category of the plants. Therefore, herbarium is a storehouse of plants. And here, the plants, how are they stored? You all must be remembering certain movie scenes or serial scenes or maybe your real life scenes. Whenever there is a flower or there is a leaf, you put it in between the pages of some diary and you press it. After months or years, you open that diary and you find that particular plant specimen again which is dried and is also pressed because of the closing of the book. And that's how you also preserve when you form the herbarium of your own. And similarly, what is done in this herbarium as well is that the plant specimens, they first of all are dried. They are also pressed in between the sheets and this is how they are preserved on those sheets. Now the sheets on which the plant specimens are preserved, they are carrying certain labels with them. What all things are present on the sheet? Number one, the date. The date on which that particular plant specimen was collected and preserved. Then is the place of collection from where was that plant specimen collected. It also has the English name of that plant specimen, the botanical name of that plant specimen and the local name of that plant specimen along with the family. So the family of that particular plant is also mentioned. And the collector's name is also mentioned. So here we are actually giving a credit to the person who has collected, preserved and done so much of research on that particular plant specimen. So this is really important. What all things are present on the sheet? You are having the date, place of collection, English name, local name, the botanical name, the family and the collector's name. So this was about herbarium which is a storehouse of number one plants. And are the plants present live? Are, are we giving uh, nutrients? Are we providing soil, sunlight and water to these plants? No, we are not providing any such thing. Instead, we are preserving it in between sheets. Done. Now we move on to the second technique that is of botanical gardens. Okay, removing the word botanical, coming to the word gardens. We all must have visited gardens when we were children or maybe when we are adult. We all have visited gardens. We see lovely flowers and lovely trees and colorful 
you know, colorful view and certain butterflies are also present. And botanical gardens would be a garden where only plants and flowers specimens are present. Botanical done. So specialized garden. There is a collection of living plants. So here comes the difference. The difference is that in case of herbarium, the plants were not living. Instead, they were dry pressed and preserved. But in botanical gardens, the plants are living. Plants living means we have to every day provide them with water, provide them with sunlight, sufficient nutrients and we have to take a good care of these plants. So botanical gardens are a collection of the living plants. Now in the NCERB text, there are three names of certain famous botanical gardens, though there are many botanical gardens. But since we are restricted to our NCERB text, it has mentioned about three famous botanical gardens. Number one is Q, and this botanical garden Q is present in England. Then is the Indian Botanical Garden. Quite easy name to remember, a botanical garden present in India, Indian Botanical Garden. And the third one is the National Botanical Research Institute. The National Botanical Research Institute is present in India itself in Lucknow. So this was about botanical garden. So the first two techniques that we have done were all about the plants. In herbarium, the plants were dry pressed and preserved. In botanical gardens, the living plant specimens were preserved. Now we move on to museums. Now museums we all have visited. But here the museum that we are going to talk about is slightly different from the museums that we have visited. So in this museum, we are not just going to talk about only plant specimens or only animal specimens. Instead, these museums have a collection of plant as well as animal specimens. So both of these specimens are present and preserved. Collection of preserved plant and animal specimens. So here, what it means, what do we mean by preserved plant and animal specimens is that these animal specimens and plant specimens are not real. The real animals or the real plants, the living plants are not present over here. Though they are real, but they are not living. They are preserved. Once they are dead, then their bodies are preserved with the help of certain chemicals. Okay. So collection of preserved plants and animal specimens in the museums. And where are the museums mostly present? These museums are mostly present in the educational institutes, educational setups like the medical colleges. Or maybe certain schools have a biology lab. In that biology lab, certain specimens of plants and animals are also present. So first one, we did herbarium for the storehouse of plants, dry press preserved. Second one, we did botanical gardens for the storehouse of living plants. Third one, we did museums. That was a collection of preserved plants as well as animals. Not just one, but both of them. The fourth one that we are going to move on are the zoological parks. Now zoological parks are doing a little bit biasing because they are only there for the animals, not for plants and animals both. So zoological parks are basically for the preservation of the wild animals under protected environments. So let us quickly read it. The places where wild animals are kept in protected environments. So zoological parks are those places in which the wild animals like your lion, leopard, tiger, all of these elephants, all these wild animals are kept under protected environment. And one very important thing is that these animals are provided similar conditions as if they are present in the natural habitat. And I'll just tell you one line. And after that, the zoological parks would become very much clear to you. Zoological parks are commonly called as zoos. So we all must have visited zoos, whether we were toddlers or we are teenagers or we were adults. We all have visited the zoos and there we see that the tigers are present and a huge lot of area is given to the tigers. The grasses are present and a sort of, you know, a jungle is formed for them. So that is what is done, that the actual habitat feel is given to the the particular animals. So zoological parks are places where the wild animals are kept in protected environments. Conditions provided are similar to the natural habitat of the animal and commonly called as zoos, which we love to visit if sufficient animals are present over there, right? So the fourth one also we have done. The fifth technique is a key. Now in this key, what I want to tell you is here we are not storing or preserving any plant or animal specimen. But what exactly we are doing is 
we are storing or preserving the information about a particular plant specimen or an animal specimen. So key is used for identification of plants and animals. So since we are storing information about the plants and animals, so it would be used for identifying the different plants and animal specimens. And what is the basis of identification? On the basis of what do we identify a particular plant species or a particular animal species? The basis of identification is a pair of contrasting characters. Contrasting characters, would be, I'll give you an example. Supposingly, this is one plant specimen and this is the second plant specimen. So, key would be having a pair of contrasting characters. Like, there would be certain statements that would be present in the key for identification of a particular plant specimen. So, if this one is a, uh, maybe this one is some plant specimen A and this one is some plant specimen B and in the key it is mentioned that plant specimen A must be green in color. So, this would of course be eliminated out and this would be chosen. Why? Because we are having a contrasting character. This is not green, so this would be eliminated out and we identify this as the plant specimen A. Now, this is not as easy as I have explained to you right now because there are many statements that are present in the key on the basis of which you have to do. So, it is really a tedious task to do and every statement that is present in the key is known as a lead. So, for those of you who watch Crime Patrol or maybe CID a lot of times or the police people, so they usually use a term that we have got a lead, just move with, over there, we have got some lead. So, that is what is present in the key. Every statement in the key is known as a lead with the help of which we are moving more and more closer to a, the particular plant specimen or the animal specimen that we want to identify. Uh, just like the police gets a lead and moves more and more closer to that particular criminal. So, that is what the example can be given as. So, used for identification of plants and animals uh, key based on contrasting characters and the pair of contrasting character is known as couplet. Each statement in a key is known as a lead which is making you move more and more closer to your identifying plant or identifying animal. Now we move on to the others category for techniques. In others, we are having three things. Number one, you are having flora. Number two, the manuals. And number three, you are having the monographs. So flora, manual and monographs. All of you must have heard of flora and fauna. Flora is a term usually used for the plants and fauna is a term usually used for the animals. So here we are having flora that contains the actual account of habitat and distribution of plants because flora term so we would be including our dear plants so here there is an account of the actual place where these plants are present and the actual area in which they are distributed which also help us to store these particular plants in a particular area then we are having the manuals as the another technique which provides information for identification of names of species found in an area so the species which are found in an area, the plant species found in an area can be identified with the help of flora. But how to identify the name of that particular species? That can be done with the help of the manuals. The name can be identified. And lastly, you are having monographs that contains information on any one taxa. Any one taxon, sorry. So monograph is containing information on any one taxon. So for those of you who have already watched part Two of the video, you must be knowing what taxa is or taxon is. Come on quickly. Little bit thinking processes should also be applied on you. So for those of you who remembered, let me just tell you what taxa was that we did in part two of this uh, video. Taxa was the term, the scientific term that was used for the convenient categories in which we place different species and different organisms. Done? So taxa was a scientific term for the convenient categories. So this was all about this chapter, all about the taxonomical aids and techniques. Now a bonus point that comes is, comes over here. What sometimes happens is, we all read the chapter very well, but you all must be familiar with your NCERT books. There is a summary at the back of the chapter. We tend to leave that summary thinking that everything we have already read in the chapter, now what's the use of reading that summary, right? 
But sometimes in the summaries, there are certain additional points which are not present anywhere in the chapter or sometimes they are not directly present in the chapter. So therefore, you should make a habit of making that, uh, reading that summary as well. So I've read that summary and for this chapter, I could find only one thing, only one line that was not directly given in the text and that is taxonomic keys, the same key that we studied over here. Taxonomic keys are tools that help in identification based on the characteristics. So here also we studied that this was helping in the identification of plants and animals. So here taxonomical keys are basically helping in the identification. And this identification is based on the characteristics of the plants and the animal species. So you can have a look on what all we have covered just now. Done. So thank you everyone for watching this chapter and with this we come to an end for the video lecture for biology class 11 unit 1 chapter 1 the living world. In all there are four parts if you haven't watched any one part yet I have given the link in the description box below and the next video for this chapter would be there on the notes of this chapter. So whatever I have written till now on the boards and certain additional informations, I would be providing the link for the document of that particular note so that you can get handwritten notes and you can easily copy it out and make your own notes. So thank you everyone and please do subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet and do like the video if you like my efforts and share it with as many friends as you can. Thank you.